Muslims said that the secular is principles. And there were some people, even among the Mushrikun, that said, don't do this. They would go out and they'd say, if it's a girl, give it to me, I'll take care of her, but don't do this. So when the Prophet ﷺ, they stood up for their human principles, justice, right, human decency, they were Muslims. But because they stood up for these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the world a better place. Uh, another point is that the messengers on Ibn Salat al-Sam, they did have families. Right? They did have families, they did eat, they were humans, right? So a lot of the things that affect humans, such as fatigue, hunger, tired, uh, uh, being untired, forgetfulness, this did affect the messengers on Ibn Salat al-Sam as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned that no prophet can bring a sign. The one who brings the signs is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that people have always been scheming, planning, plotting how to destroy the religion, how to destroy the Prophet sallam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient witness to the truth of the message of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. named after Abraham. Verse 35. Who prays to God that Mecca may be who prays to God that Mecca may be made prosperous so that his people may be thankful and continue to worship God. The ungrateful are condemned and the grateful commended throughout this world. Abraham also asked that he and his descendants may be protected from idol worship. This serves to remind the Meccans that they should shun the worship of idols. So the Meccans should be grateful and shun idolatry. In the name of God, the Lord of mercy, the giver of mercy. Adif Nam Law. This is a scripture which we have sent down to you, prophets, so that with their Lord's permission, you may bring people from the depths of darkness into light, to the path of all, to the path of the Almighty, the praiseworthy one, God, to whom everything in the heavens and earth belongs. How terrible will be the torment of those who ignore him, those who prefer the life of this world over the life to come, who turn others from God's way, trying to make it crooked. Such people have gone far astray. We have never sent a messenger who did not use his own people's language to make things clear for them. But still God leaves whoever he wills astray and guides whoever he will. He is the Almighty, the All-Wise. Right, to bring people from darkness into light. And subhanAllah, when we start practicing the religion and we start making the religion has importance on we start praying our prayers after having collected them, we, you know, fasting has a part in our life, we try to be better as people, we try to repair relationships with our family members, we try to do better in all aspects, then we look at how we used to live our life in the past, and our, it's, it's like from going to Jahiliyyah to the end of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is like, you know, if you think that your life has changed. Like you're living in darkness and the light has been turned on and now you're able to see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned this said of ayah that why do they fall into this darkness? It's because they prefer the life of this world over the hereafter. And this is a constant theme that we've been talking about from the beginning and this is where going to be, it's the last surah of the 13th juz you see the recurrence of this theme, and you'll see it a lot more going forward, is when people forget about the Akhirah, and Shaitan finds his way in and says, okay, I got this guy. I got him now, right? That's what Shaitan wants us to do. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Any messenger that was sent to his people spoke the language of the people. And this is very, very important, very critical, uh, because, you know, sometimes you have different masajid, and even the khutbah, um, it's, it's a test, okay? Can the person understand what I'm saying? There's some tests of khutbah in Arabic or Urdu and different languages. And the majority of the people are English-speaking people, but I have no idea what this person is saying. And I've seen it, I've seen it with my own eyes. Um, is it Makki Masjid? I don't know, it's a big Masjid. In Jamnah, in Jamnah, in Jamnah, you know what it is? Makki Masjid, what is it? Makki Masjid, right? So I went there, and there was this, um, it was like near Islam and Mi'raj, like 2007. And Masjid's huge. The Masjid's huge, right? And 
the Khatib is giving a khutbah, and Abdullah by that time I was a few months in Egypt, so I understood what he was saying. He's giving it, it's all in Arabic. All in Arabic. And then the only thing that was in Urdu was the Safis Sita one. Right, make your line straight. And people are sleeping, people have no idea what's going on. No translation, no bayan, no nothing. And that's just a waste. That doesn't fulfill the purpose of the khutbah. And then I was just like, um, I talked to even my father and a lot of others, and I was like, what was he talking about? Do you guys know? They're like, I can't believe Right? I, they didn't have any idea of what was going on. So it's just this, this purpose of the message, the message that I used to set up, is to be able to talk to the people in the language that they understand. Right? So sometimes that's why, you know, in the summers we try to have younger khatibs because they can connect better, right? Well, it's all okay, they can connect better with their youth. Even like sometimes, like, I was born and raised here. I was born and raised here. Even sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't even know what you guys are talking about anymore. Even my niece, I do send her like, oh, that's so 2010. So, all right, I'm getting older, right? So these type of things, we have to be understanding, cognizant, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understood that and he set the people to talk to the people at the level that they understood. And this is something we have to be able to adapt, we have to be able to understand. You know, American culture is very different. I remember uh, one of my friends I teach with, you know, he was telling his, uh, one of his Arab students that your favorite food has to be, uh, you know, some kind of Arab dish and stuff. So then he asked me, what's your favorite food? Right? Because I'm originally Indian, lived in the Middle East for most of the, the 20s. So I said pizza. He looked at me and said, hold on. Like, he said, how could pizza be your other book? I was born and raised here. That's why. So we have to be able to understand like what is Islam, what is culture, and what can be adopted, right? If somebody says pizza is their favorite food, are they more, uh, more or less religious than someone that says biryani is their favorite food or shawarma is their favorite food? No, right? I remember, um, and not to go too far on tangent on this issue, I remember um, I was visiting a city, and they're like, you know, the person who takes care of the masjid is very, very good, but there's one fatal flaw in him. I was like, what is it? Like, he doesn't wear shawarma. And I'm like, I don't wish for them either, like, right? But this is culture, it's not religion. So we have to be able to make that distinction, we have to be able to connect to the people in terms that they can understand. So we sent Moses with our signs. Bring out your people from the depths of darkness into light. Remind them of the remind them of the days of God. There are truly are signs in this for every steadfast, thankful person. And so Moses said to his people, Remember God's blessing on you when he saved you from Pharaoh's people, who were inflicting terrible suffering on you, slaughtering your sons and sparing only your women. That was a severe test from your Lord. Remember that he promised, If you are thankful, I will give you more. But if you are thankless, my punishment is terrible indeed. And Moses said, Even if you, together with everybody else on earth, are thankless, God is self-sufficient, worthy of all praise. Have you disbelievers not heard about those who went before you, the people of Nuh, Ad, Thamud, and those after them, known only to God? Their messengers came to them with clear proof, but they tried to silence them, saying, We do not believe the messages you were sent with. We have disturbing doubts about what you were asking us to do. Their messengers answered, Can there be any doubt about God, the creator of the heavens and earth? He calls you to him in order to forgive you your sins and let you enjoy your life until the appointed hour. But they said, You are only men like us. You want to turn us away from what our forefathers used to worship. Bring us a clear proof then, if you can. Their messengers answered, Truly, we are only men like you, but God favors whichever of his servants he chooses. We cannot bring you any proof unless God permits it. So let the believers put all their trust in Him. Why should we not put our trust in God when it is He who has guided us to the, to the ways we follow? We shall certainly bear steadfastly whatever harm you do to us. Let anyone who trusts, trust in God. Okay, a few examples here, a few lessons from this part is when Musa said, I'm told his people to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon them from uh, by saving them from Fir'aun. Uh, there's another ayah. What, uh, Hassan, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention about thankfulness in this set of verses?
Abbiamo qua consentita la riforma di Fondra, abbiamo una funzione di scherzo di Fondra, non si deve fare. Sit in the front. Ready? Okay, he said that will give you more. If we're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases. But what does he say if we're uh, thankless or we forget to thank, no, if we neglect to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the word here is not necessarily uh, thanking or not thanking in terms of thanklessness. It says, what in kafartum. Kafartum? What's that word that we know from kafartum? Believe, right? Reject. The blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the adab in the shadeen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment is severe. Okay, when we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who do we benefit? Ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here mentions that if you and the whole world were to disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't affect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. So the way to preserve and increase the blessings that we have is to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the nations of the past, right? And how some of the people rejected them because they said, oh, you're men like us. Yeah, but you see the difference in the quality of men as well. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the men to be messengers. And you see how they're patient and steadfast and they put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While the other men who are jealous of the messengers, they put their faith, their trust in their wealth, in their property, in their children, in their own selves. But the believers, the messengers, والسلام, who did they put their trust in? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you see now that the messengers, messengers were threatened. And they were threatened to be uh, kicked out of the land, they were threatened to uh, execution, things like that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them. The disbelievers said to their messengers, we shall expel you from our lands unless you return to our religion. But their Lord inspired the messengers. We shall destroy the evildoers and leave you to dwell in the land after them. This reward is for those who are in awe of meeting with me and of my warnings. They ask God to decide, and every obstinate tyrant failed. Hell awaits each one. He will be given foul water to drink, which he will try to gulp, but which he will try to gulp, but scarcely be able to swallow. Death will encroach on him from every side but he will not die. More intense suffering will lie ahead of him. The deeds of those who reject the Lord are like ashes that the wind blows furiously on a stormy day. They have no power of anything they have gained. This is to stray far, far away. Which is belief, 
and following the messengers alayhi salatu was salam. Prophet, do you not see that God created the heavens and the earth for a purpose? He could remove all of you and replace you with a new creation if you wish to. That is not difficult for God. When they all appear before him, the weak will say to the power seekers, we were your followers. Can you protect us from any of God's punishment? They will reply, if God had guided us, we would have guided you. It makes no difference now whether we rage or endure with patience. There is no escape. When everything has been decided, Shaitan will say, God gave you a true promise. I too made promises, but they were false ones. I had no power over you except to call you, and you responded to my call. So do not blame me, blame yourselves. I cannot help you, nor can you help me. I reject the way you associated me with God before. A bitter torment awaits such wrongdoers. But those who believed and did good deeds were brought into gardens, graced with flowing streams, there to remain with their Lord's permission. Their greeting there is peace. Okay, first thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has the Prophet said that, don't you see that Allah created the heaven and the earth for a purpose? Okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to replace each and every one of you and bring a whole new creation, and that would not be difficult. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or Rasul Wisdom behind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, talking about the creation of the heavens and the earth, and then talking about his ability to replace everyone? Why does, what's the wisdom behind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning his ability to create the heavens and the earth? I got you. Um, create the heavens and the earth. And then after that he says that if Allah wants, he can replace each and every one of us. What's the connection between the two? Last word. Very good, Mashallah. Good job. He's saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making us understand that the, He has a power to create things that are much, much greater than us. So He has the ability to replace us as well. There's another ayah in Surah Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, The khatb al samawati wal ardi akbar min khatb al nas. Right? That the creation of the heavens and the earth is much uh, greater than the creation of people. So the people that question, how is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to bring people back to life? Don't they reflect on everything that's around them? Good. Uh, another point here is what is the conversation that's going to be taking place? When, from sisters, what's the conversation that's going to be taking place in the fire of hell between the followers and those that they follow? conversation that shaitan will have with people, the people that are astray on the Day of Judgment. What would he say to them? I never forced you to do anything. I just called you and you responded. I made promises to you, Allah made promises to you. Allah's promises were true, my promises were false. So don't blame me, but who should we truly blame? Ourselves, blame yourself. So we have to be careful. Shaitan will always desert a person when they need him most. Right? And this is what happened in the Battle of Badr as well. He went to the people in the form of a human and said that there's no one from the people that is going to be able to beat you on this day. But then when he went there and he saw the angels, he said, I'm, I'm out. He said, I'm leaving. I see that which you don't see. And I have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then the Mushrikun suffered the fate that they suffered. So, we are not going to be able to blame Shaitan on the Day of Judgment, because Shaitan does not have any power over us. He just incites us. He just gives us uh, encouragement to commit sin. 
Similarly, we do have friends. They may do the work of shaitan and encourage us to do bad things. But do they have power over us? No, we have the power to make our own decisions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold us accountable, not because of what somebody said to us, but because of what we did. see how God makes comparisons. A good word is like a good tree whose root is firm and whose branches are high in the sky, yielding constant fruit by its Lord's leaf. God makes such comparisons for people so they may reflect. But an evil word is like a rotten tree, uprooted from the surface of the earth with no power to endure. God will give firmness to those who believe in the firmly rooted word, both in this world and the hereafter. But the evildoers he leaves astray. God does whatever he will. Prophet, do you not see those who in exchange for God's favor offer only ingratitude and make their people end up in the home of ruin, hell where they burn? What an evil place to stay. They set up false deities as God's evils to lead people astray from his path. Say, take your pleasure now, for your destination is the fire. Tell my servants who have believed to keep up the prayer and give secretly, uh, to, and, and give secretly and in public out of what we have provided them before a day comes when there will be no trading or friendship. <clears throat> it is God who created the heavens and earth, who has sent down water from the sky and with it brought forth produce and nourish you. He has made ships useful to you, sailing the sea by his command and the rivers too. He has made the sun and the moon useful to you, steady on their paths. He has made the night and day useful to you and given you some of everything you ask him for. If you try to count God's favor, you can never calculate them. Man is truly unjust and ungrateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about a good word like a good tree. Uh, and he talks about whose root is firm and whose branches are high in the sky. And it produces constant fruit by its through the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the good word is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. It is a firmly rooted tree. That's fruits are constant, and it gives us anchor, it gives us support, and its branches reach high into the sky. Meaning, the fact that we say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that we believe, believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is uh, demonstrated. The fact is presented or uh, implemented by our actions. Right? That's our anchor, that's our base. What does that mean? What should that inspire us to do? To be better in all aspects of our to bring khayyam and benefit wherever we are, to whoever we can. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the evil word or the evil tree is like kufr and shit. Right? That will eat away at the foundation of a person's well-being, of a person's morals, a person's faith, and it will bring harmful consequences. Like La ilaha illallah brings benefit, benefit to the people and to mankind, to all of creation, shirk and kufr, and following the, own, the person's own desires, it takes people, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ ثُمَّ رَضَدْنَا وَأَسْفَلَ سَافِرِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in the best of the best forms, and then He reduced the, some of us to the lowest of the low. So, how do we stay at the best of the best? We go from La ilaha illallah, and we implement La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, in our lives. But how do some people, from the best of us become worse than the worst is when they lose faith. When they lose their morals, their principles, and the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and all of the focus on this immediate gratification, they become selfish, they don't realize the rights others have upon them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes some of the characteristics of these people. And he said they exchange the favors that Allah has bestowed upon them with ingratitude. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers to establish prayer, charity, publicly, privately, and before a time where there's no buying or selling, there's no intercession except for the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about some of his universal signs. What are some of the signs that he gives in this ayah? Ayah 32. Ayah the sun, the moon, 
sending down the water and rain, right? The ability to sail on the sea um, and rivers. Right? This is all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the night and the day useful to you and giving you some of everything you asked him for. If you try to count the blessing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if you try to sit down and try to even think about the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you, you'll never be able to do so. But in response to these blessings, in the insan and the the people, humans as a whole, they're unjust, they attribute blessings instead of to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they're ungrateful to the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to be just and give us the ability to be grateful. Preserve me and my offspring from idolatry. Lord, the idols have led many people astray. Anyone who follows me, anyone who follows me is with me. But as for anyone who disobeys me, you are surely forgiving and merciful. Our Lord, I have settled some of my offspring in an uncultivated valley, close to your sacred house, Lord, so that they may keep up the prayer. Make people's hearts turn to them and provide them with produce so that they may be thankful. Our Lord, you know well what we conceal and what we reveal. Nothing at all is hidden from God, on earth or in heaven. Praise be to God, who has granted me Ishmael and Isaac in my old age. My Lord hears all requests. Lord, grant that I, that I and my offspring may keep up the prayer. Our Lord, accept my request. Our Lord, forgive me, my parents, and the believers on the day of reckoning. Do not, do not think, prophet, that God is unaware of what the disbelievers do. He only gives them respite until the day when their eyes will stare in terror. They will rush forward, craning their necks, unable to divert their eyes, a gaping void in their hearts. So warn people of the day when punishment will come to them, and when the disbelievers will say, Our Lord, give us a little more time. We shall answer your call and follow the messengers. Did you disbelievers not swear in the past that your power would have no end? You lived in the same places as others who wronged themselves before, and you were clearly shown how we dealt with them. We gave you many examples. They made their plots, but even if their plots had been able to move mountains, God had the answer. So do not think, Prophet, that God will break His promise to His messengers. He is mighty and capable of retribution. One day when, earth is to, when the earth is turned into another earth, the heavens into another heaven, and people all appear before God, the one, the overpowering. You, Prophet, will see the guilty on that day, bound together in fetters, in garments of pitch, faces covered in fire. All will be judged so that God may reward each soul as it deserve, deserves. God is swift in his reckoning. This is a message to all people so that they may be warned by it and know that he is the only God and so that those who have minds may take heed. These last verses of Surah Al-Wahim are very powerful and you might hear many Imams uh, reciting in Salah, and it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us about Rahim alayhi salam making dua to him to make Mecca safe, to protect not only himself but his progeny from shirk. And think about that. Shirk is so dangerous that Ibrahim alayhi salam, Khalilullah, right, a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him from shirk. So we always have to be on guard from uh, shirk and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from shirk. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make people's hearts turn to them and provide them with produce so that they may be thankful. Remember, Makkah at that time, when He left His family, how was it? There's nothing there. Even water they didn't have, they didn't have sunset. But if you look at Makkah today, even at the time of Prophet, people from all around the world at that time used to come to Makkah for their buying, selling, trading, caravans, and things like that. Right? People in, in Hajj time, there used to be something called Sufa Rukkab. That Surah Al-Kab was basically like an international market, international festival where people look forward to. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did turn people's hearts over to that. He made dua multiple times to give the people the, uh, give the people our ability to establish a salah. And he thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bestowing children upon him in his old age. And he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, grant that he and his offspring give the ability to establish a salah and to accept his du'a 
and to forgive him, his parents, and the believers on the day of judgment. Right? Remember, he did ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive his parents. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him you can't ask forgiveness for your parents anymore because they died in a state other than Islam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wala ta'asabanna Allah Allah fi amma ya'malu qalimun. Do not think, do not think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unaware of what the oppressors are doing. Sometimes people they think that you know there's so much oppression going on in the world, why is it allowed to happen and things like that. This ayah is reminding to each and every one of us that Allah knows everything that's happening. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold everyone accountable. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that uh, people will come and they will say, well Allah send us back. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say no because He gave us all of the information that we needed in order to be successful the first time. But people, we lived in the same places as others. We saw their examples, we learned about their stories. And we, made, and we thought that we would be different. And people, they made their plots, but even after their plots, uh, had their plots been able to move out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had an answer. Whatever plots that people make, even if those plots are so great that they can come together and make a plot or a plan to move a mountain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plans are still greater than that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that He will never break His promises and whatever He promised will come true. Then He talks about the earth changing to another earth. And He talks about the heaven changing to another heaven. It's all on the Day of Judgment that's going to happen. And you will see people, the guilty, bound together in fetters. What are fetters? Chains. Right? Fetters are like chains. And sometimes they'll have like shackles around their neck. And then they'll have chains that tie their hands. Okay, what is, um, there's another word, it's not a, uh, in garments of pitch. What is a pitch? Tar. Right, we're going to use the word tar. Pretty soon we'll use the word pitch and things like that. But here it means like tar. Right, the face is covered in the fire. And all will be judged, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward each soul as it deserves. And this is a message to all people, so that they may be warned by it. And what do we, what's the warning? How do we, be successful, how do we heed this warning, right? By understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only God. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that deserves to be worshipped. And so that those who have minds may take heed, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to take heed, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all in this world and in the hereafter. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our families and grant us all to benefit of those. And inshallah we'll take a break and we'll come back at 12 o'clock and we'll cover some of the pages inshallah ta'ala.